In this quick lesson, I'll show you how to find the direction angle of a vector in R3. The question reads, determine the angle that the vector, which has the components 2, 1, and 4, vector A, makes with each of the coordinate axes. So again, for reference, this is vector A. And the very first thing that I want to do is assign letters that represent the angles of this vector relative to the three axes. So I'll call the angle that is between this vector and the x-axis alpha, although you can use any letter that you like to represent that angle. The angle between the vector and the y-axis as beta, and the angle between the vector and the z-axis as gamma. Now according to the formulas provided underneath, in order to find alpha, beta, and gamma, we use the following formulas, where, let's focus in on this one, to find alpha, we take the dot product of a times i, a being the vector and i being the unit vector along the x-axis. The component of i, for reference, are 1, 0, and 0. So you take the dot product of a and i and divide it by the magnitude of a. And similarly, to find b, you do the same thing, but instead of i, you use j, which has the components 0, 1, and 0, and you get the idea. But rather than just simplifying this with three formulas, let's find out how these formulas are derived. And we'll do this really quickly. Now remember, whenever we want to find the angle between two vectors, we use the dot product. And the dot product is calculated in two ways. The very first way is the algebraic way, where you take the vector, or the two vectors in our case would be vector a and the unit vector i, and you multiply their components together and sum them up. You end up with a scalar quantity. So something like this, where you have the x components of the two vectors, plus the y components, plus the z components. This is the algebraic way to find the dot product of two vectors. The geometric way looks like this, where again the dot product is equal to the magnitude of A, and I'll represent magnitude with these absolutes, times the magnitude of vector I, the unit vector, times cosine theta. Notice how the geometric equation allows us to find the angle. If we combine these two formulas, we should end up with the following formula shown underneath. Let me demonstrate. Dividing both sides by these two factors gives us the expression on the left being this times that is equal to cosine theta. Notice the similarity between what we have here and what's shown underneath here, except that the denominator here is the magnitude of A only, and the reason for that is if you multiply the magnitude of these two vectors, you should end up with simply the magnitude of vector A. So there's no need to write that down, and that's why it's simplified to look like this. All right, I'm now ready to show you how to find alpha, beta, and gamma. Let's use this formula. And remember, the components of A are 2, 1, and 4. So the dot product will be using this formula for that part, 2 times 1 plus 1 times 0, remember the y component of i is 0, plus 4 times 0, the z component of i is 0, over the magnitude of a, let's find out what the magnitude of a is, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem, so 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 4 squared, all square rooted. We have the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 16, that's 21. So I'll write down the square root of 21, and that is equal to cosine alpha. Let's simplify this. 2 over the square root of 21 is equal to cosine alpha. We will take the inverse of cosine, so cosine inverse 2 over the square root of 21 gives us the angle for alpha. Let's use our calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode.
cosine 2 divided by the square root of 21 gives us an angle of 64.1 degrees. 64.1 degrees is the angle in which this blue vector makes with the x-axis. Now remember, the denominator will be the same for the other calculations. All I have to do is erase the top and we'll have different numerators for each calculation, except the square root of 21 will remain the way it is. Okay, so I'll take 2 times 0 plus 1 times 1, the y component is 1, and the z component is 0. The top part, or the numerator, simplifies to 1. We have cosine inverse of 1 divided by the square root of 21 makes an angle of 77.4 degrees. Let me erase that and say 77.4 degrees. And finally, for the last angle, gamma, 2 times 0, the x component along the z axis is 0, plus 1 times 0, plus 4 times 1. The z component along the z axis for the unit vector is 1. This time we get 4 over the square root of 21 using our calculator. Inverse cosine 4 divided by the square root of 21 makes 29.2 degrees. 29.2 and that should be gamma. Therefore, the vector makes the angles 64.1 degrees, 77.4, and 29.2 degrees along the x, y, and z axes. To simplify these three formulas even more, this should only be the x component of A, that would be the y component of A, and finally the z component of A, as you noticed when we did the three calculations. And there you have it. That is how to find the direction angle of a vector in 3-space.